Over the years, I've fine-tuned my iPad setup. I've got apps specifically for the morning, for the day, and for the evening, and I structure my iPad in that exact way. Now, I'm gonna share with you the apps that have had huge updates this year that make them even more powerful and introduce some new ones that I've recently discovered that I think you'll like. And then I'm gonna show how they all fit into that daily routine. So without further ado, let's jump into the apps of 2025. Mornings are all about setting the tone. I need to get key information. I need to find a little bit of inspiration and of course, lighten the mood. And if you take note of the layout that I've got on my homepage, this is the opening homepage of my iPad. What you'll see is that I've got two apps that are very prominent. The first being the weather app. Sydney can either be blazing hot or torrential rain. So having a forecast in the morning is super important. That is the first thing I see, but that's not the app I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about Todoist. The morning is about making sure that I've got the things done that I need to get done. And Todoist is the app where I can see the outstanding tasks throughout the day. Now YouTube comes with me throughout my entire day wherever I am. Often when I'm making breakfast or sorting out breakfast for the family, I've got YouTube on in the side for a little bit of entertainment during that pretty mundane task. Okay, next up is Optusport and The Athletic. Now both are sports-based applications and the reason these are important for me is because I live down under. I live in Australia. All of the football that I like to watch in the UK, I'm a Chelsea fan, don't hold that against me, happens at about 2 a.m. in the morning. So when I wake up, I have a very small window of time when I need to know what the score is before anyone spoils it for me. And the amazing thing about Optus is that it allows you to watch a full 90 minute replay of any game, meaning that I can either watch the live game when there's a 6 a.m. kickoff, very rare, but they're good, or I can watch the full 90. But you'll also see that I've got a shortcut into Notion. Now, specifically my ideas page, because I really find that as I'm going about my morning routine, I get a lot of inspiration for what video I should make next. And I want a quick shortcut that gets me directly to that page to add that brand new idea. So that is sat right there. And of course, I've got my calendar, just in case some sneaky event that I completely forgotten about crops up, I catch it first thing in the morning. And of course, I've got to mention this app, Flipboard. Flipboard is an amazing, aggregator of news, but it's done in a beautiful layout that really feels like your own custom magazine. Right on my iPad while I'm on my way into work with my coffee, perfect. Okay, so that is the morning out of the way and now we're into the key part of the day. I've got apps that make me even more efficient than ever before and there are some new AI powered applications that I want to introduce to you because I think they're gonna really help you as much as they've helped me. And hey, if you like what you see today, please consider subscribing. It may just be a small click for you, but for me, it is a huge deal and helps this channel grow. So let's start with probably the breakout star of last year that I only used a little bit of and I'm gonna start using much more this year. That is LM Notebook. Now, it is an application by Google that allows you to turn any written text, a PDF, whatever, a long document into a podcast. Well, it looks like you're trying to get us to wrap our heads around the big picture of the industry. You know, what's working, what's worrying folks, and where we might be headed. Yeah, it's a fascinating snapshot of an industry that's really in transition right now. Uh -huh. It allows you to turn that really ugly 300 page document on tech privacy updates and turn it into a two way conversation for you to listen to while you're on your way into work. Now there isn't a dedicated app for it, but this is a web app that I've got laid out on my page. And you'll see that this home screen, this second page on my iPad is now much more functional. What we've got on the full left hand side, the different time zones that I need to keep an eye on. I've got my calendar for my work outlook and of course, I've got key trending news. All the highly functional productivity apps are all centered here. And while I use Apple Notes for a lot of my professional and personal note taking, OneNote is the application that I like to use for all things work related note taking because it syncs with all of my office suite of applications. It allows me to take notes and have them on any device wherever they are and share them with other colleagues. Okay, and now to something that's slightly more interesting, Zapier. I'm always on the hunt for better productivity and it, this app was introduced to me. I'm still experimenting with it, but theoretically, I should be able to automate a ton of tasks. So for example, the thing I'm trying to play with right now is I wanna come up with an idea in Notion for a YouTube video and then Zapier will be able to send an API call to ChatGPT to support on formatting and spell checking automatically and then return that back in 
to the same Notion page I was working on. Or for example, the moment I finish a YouTube video and upload that to my Google Drive, it can sync specifically with my YouTube app and upload it ready for publishing. This kind of automation is really what this year is gonna be about, finding even more effective ways to get more things done. And while we're on that topic, ChatGPT is the king of getting more things done quickly. ChatGPT is my brainstorming buddy. It comes with me everywhere when I'm working on an idea, when I'm thinking about how I could frame a specific topic. ChatGPT is there to offer advice, to act as a critique to the way that I'm thinking of framing. I use this a bit differently. I don't just use it verbatim. I really use ChatGPT as a critique for my work. Are there ways that I could improve this? Is there, is there an idea here that I haven't quite explored? ChatGPT is really good at extrapolating that out from your brain if you don't have any work buddies around that care about what you're thinking about. Which by the way happens all the time in the world of data and tech. And finally, I'd be nowhere without Trello and Teams. Trello keeps my tasks organized while Teams lets me communicate with my colleagues without cluttering up my laptop. So I turn off notifications on my laptop and just have that set up on my iPad to ensure that I've got a seamless workflow process. I can always stay in my flow state. Do you use something like Notion or do you use Trello or do you use something completely different? Or do you feel that that is too much over organization, I'd love to know because I'm always looking for little optimizations I can make or things I could introduce. Okay, so the work day is done, but the day doesn't stop there because when I get home, I need to be a dad. I do that until my daughter goes to bed. I've got dinner sorted and that is where I start to tap into my next suite of apps. The evening becomes all about creativity. So I actually use a combination of applications to get my creative juices flowing. And the way that I stitch them together just allows me to be as expressive as possible while being as organized as possible. So my evening would not be complete without tapping into Final Cut Pro and of course the Final Cut Pro camera. And that is all about recording content for this channel as seamlessly and streamlined as possible. So the Final Cut camera is set up on my phone and it connects seamlessly with the Final Cut Pro app on my iPad. And as I'm recording, I can see myself here in my setup and I don't need to kind of ram my head against that wall and peek down because I've tried that and it doesn't work. So that combination duo is really, really powerful for me. The next is Freeform and Apple Notes. So this is where I really let my creativity go and I use Freeform as a full brainstorming device. So I want to come up with ideas that are, you know, a bit more traditional, you know, pen and paper. I find using pen and paper just more creative than just typing in ideas into Notion. So I'll use Freeform first to come up with my ideas and use brainstorming techniques here. And Apple Notes come in when I need to just be a little bit more structured. And then once I feel like I've just cracked the creative code, I'll then jump into Notion. I capture absolutely everything I want to make in the future. And these shortcuts that I've made on my home page here allow me just to jump straight into something when I want to flesh out an idea that I may have had earlier in the day or expand on a topic for later. Oh, and here's a little secret post-credit prologue. The day doesn't stop there. Could you believe it? There's more. Well, once I've done my full day, I've done my editing, I've made dinner, we're all done. Now, finally, it is time to relax. And that is where I've just got an entire page of just various content apps that is my day. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you discover some apps that you didn't know about or rediscover some apps that you knew about that you'd decided weren't good enough for you. I think you'll find that they're okay. If you found this helpful, give us a thumbs up and even better, drop a comment below and recommend some apps that I should be trying this year. I really wanna hear about it. And if you're brand new here, consider a subscribe to Future Simplified where we talk about applications, technologies that can simplify your life. In fact, we've got a couple here on productivity and some deep dives into some specific apps that I think you'll like. If not, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, goodbye.